All right, let's talk about perimeter of some different objects that we have up here. Perimeter has the word rim in it. Look right here. And rim to me means the walk around an object. Example, let's say that we have this square right here. Now you know that a square, all sides are the same length. So if I tell you that one side is four inches, I don't have to label the other sides. All we're gonna do is take the four inches, four, 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 and four, add up all four sides, and we get our perimeter, which is 16, and those little things stand for inches, okay? If it had been seven, then we can say seven four times over for 28 inches, or we can add seven and seven, 14, seven and seven, 14, but either way, we still get 28 inches. All right, now let's go to a rectangle. We don't have to identify all sides because the opposite sides on a rectangle are the same length. So if this is 10 inches, I know this is 10 inches. And if this is four inches, I know this is four. But if you want, we can go ahead and label them so you'll have all your numbers in front of you, okay? Now the formula is usually take the two lengths and add the two widths and you'll get the perimeter. So we can have two of the lengths, which is 20, and we can have two of the widths, which is eight, and we end up with 28, 28 inches, okay? So just take the top and the bottom, which is gonna be the same, Take the left and the right hand side, they're gonna be the same. Walk around, that's all we're doing is walk around, and that is nothing but 28 inches as you walk around the object. Okay, let's look at the triangle. Well, the triangle, this particular one, has uh, three different measurements for each of the sides, but perimeter means the walk around. So, let's walk around. Eight plus seven plus nine. Well, let's see, eight plus seven is 15. And 15 and 9 is 24. So the perimeter of that triangle is 24. Remember, it's just the walk around. Now, I'm not going to tell you the answer to this one. You can figure it yourself. But when I said, and other closed objects with sides, here's an example of one. And these are also examples. Over here, I've la labeled every single side. And so the only thing that you have to do is simply add up, whether they be inches or feet or miles or meters, it doesn't matter, add up all the sides. And when you get finished, put your 25 or 30 or 58 or whatever it might be, feet or inches or miles, always label it so we know what we're talking about. All right, now, down here at the bottom, I'm gonna be talking to you about perimeter, but a certain type of perimeter. I'm gonna be discussing with you what we call complex, complex perimeter. Because what has happened is we have been given an object and we've been given enough information to find the full perimeter, yet they've left off some sides. So we have to use the information given to find the missing sides, then we can add everything up, okay? All right, let's take a look at this and see what's missing. And keep in mind, these are not drawn to scale, so don't anticipate something that might not be there. Okay, this right here, this line right here is four. We'll call it four inches if you want to. Well, if this is four and these are identical, then I'll say that's four as well. Now, it looks to me like we've got one other thing missing. It looks like we've got this line right here missing. Now, how are we gonna find out what that missing line is? Let's take a look at the bottom because it gives us a clue. The horizontal line at the bottom is equal to 12. So that means all of our horizontal lines, this one, this one, and this one, have to add up to 12. Well, we already know that that's five, and we know that's five. So if we already have 10 in place, then I think we can pretty much know that this is gonna be what? I'm gonna take 10 away from 12 because I know that this, this, and this have to add up to 12. So it looks to me like this is gonna to have to be a two. If I were to push that up, just so you could see it in line, I need a five 
a something and a five to make 12. And five and two make seven, and two, a seven and five more make 12. So once you have all the sides labeled, now you can go around and add up all the sides to get the full complete perimeter, okay? I'll let you add that up yourself. You can do that. Okay, let's look at this one. Now in here, we have two sides missing, don't we? We have this horizontal missing, and we have this vertical missing. Now let's use the information that we have been given here. It looks to me like if this horizontal right here is 9, then this horizontal has got to, this horizontal and this missing horizontal has got to add up to 9. So I already have 3 in place. 3 and how many more for this horizontal will make the total of 9? Can you figure that one out? 3 and how many more? There's horizontal 3 plus horizontal Six, that's right, <clears throat> we'll make nine. Now, let's take a look at our vertical. We have a vertical line missing. This vertical, this full vertical line is 10, isn't it? Okay, now this vertical line is two, but I need to know the two and how much more of this would equal up to 10. So this vertical is two, plus the unknown vertical, two plus something has to equal to 10. So what do you think is gonna go right there? Two plus something is gonna equal to 10. You say, you say eight, let's try. Okay, well, let's see. Vertical eight plus vertical two is equal to vertical 10, and horizontal nine, uh, horizontal three, and horizontal six equal up to horizontal nine. And now the only thing left to do to get the answer to complex perimeter is what? Add up every single number for all the sides that we have identified, okay? All right, now I wanna finish this video by talking to you about area for just a moment. So let's go back to our pictures here. Okay, area is not to walk around. Area is like you're carpeting something. So let's say that you have uh, a five foot, five foot square. And I want to lay some tiles down and they're one foot square tiles. So what we're gonna do is you can, we're gonna do um, area, which is length, times width. It just so happens that the length and the width are the same on this one. So it would be 5 times 5, which is 25. But it's not just 25 feet. That's length. That's linear. We want to know how many square tiles are going to be in this picture so I'd know how much to purchase if I was tiling the room. So it's going to be 25 one foot square tiles. So I must say 25 square feet or 25 feet squared. So length times width is fine on that one. Same with our rectangle here. Let's say that we have an eight foot by five feet, okay? And on this one, we're going to do length times width again. So length times width, we're going to go 8 times 5. That is going to equal 40 feet, but it's 40 what? It's 40 square feet, or 40 feet squared, okay? Length times width on the square and on the rectangle. Now the triangle is a little bit different, okay? Let me make up one here for you. Okay, the formula for the area of a triangle is this. One half the base, which they have to tell you, times the height, and of course, because we're doing area, it has to be square feet and square meters, miles, whatever you're doing. Okay, let's say that my base is 16 inches, and I have to identify the height of the triangle for you, so I'll say that that's eight inches, okay? Now, they 
you may see in textbooks or in other lessons where they put you know different numbers out here that is absolutely not needed not for area of a triangle so don't be fooled by that if they put all kind of different numbers out there we don't care about the sides we only care about the base and the height of the triangle now we're going to take one half the base and one half of 16 is 8 so we'll multiply 8 times the height 8 times 8 which is 64 and then we're going to put square inches or inches squared. That's about all we have. So area of a square and a rectangle or length times width, make sure to put square feet or inches or whatever um, you're using there. And on a triangle, one half the base times the height. Now I'm going to tell you that some people do it a different way, and you may, but if you don't do the second part, you're going to miss it. Some people just like to multiply the base times the height, get their answer, and then half it or divide by two. If you don't, you're going to end up with area of a square or a rectangle, so you want to be careful on that. Okay? I think that takes care of perimeter, complex perimeter, and area.